Drama Llamas. Today we're going to be talking about theatrical stage makeup. Let's get started, shall we? First, we're going to talk about the purpose of stage makeup. First, stage makeup's purpose is to set the actor's appearance. An actor playing a character needs to look a certain way every time a show happens, so you need to set that into certainty. Next, it enhances what the actor looks like on stage. When we say enhances, I don't mean like contour or things like that, though that is important. When we mean enhance on stage is that when you are on stage as a performer, stage lights tend to wash you out and you lose some of your natural features. So you use stage makeup to reinforce those features by light and dark adding those in with makeup. It also helps make facial features easier to see by the audience. That is again going with the whole idea that you need to highlight and shadow certain things due to lighting or different aspects of the staging, etc. We just want things to stand out so that the audience can see it from 30 plus feet away. Another purpose of stage makeup is to show the genetics, environment, health, disfigurements, fashion, age, and personality of a character. You can use hair and makeup to show different things about your character, including all that I just listed. Let's continue. There are a couple different types of stage makeup. There is realistic, old age, and illness. There's bruises, scars, blood, burns, we kind of label that gore. You can have facial hairs, whether it's beards, mustaches, maybe a big eyebrows, etc. Fantasy, like if you're supposed to play an animal or um, a geisha or you have to have crazy tattoos or a fairy, whatever. And prosthetics or prosthesis. Prosthetics are the application of a piece of silicone or something like that to make your nose a different shape or your ears or to have a big wound or a wart, etc. Now makeup trends change throughout history. There's a video by BuzzFeed that you can look at that kind of shows you these sort of differences from different time periods. So if you have a play that's set in like the Victorian age as opposed to more something now, you can see in these two pictures of this lady side by side that the Victorian age has a different look to it as opposed to modern makeup now. And that's something you need to research and find out like what was important during that time period if it's set in a time period. Old age and illness. So when we're talking about old age, we're gonna be talking about like how to best apply it. Old age is the most common type of theatrical makeup besides the basic realistic, like making yourself look like yourself. Uh, Old age makes people look older, so the whole point is, you know, to create wrinkles and different textures of the skin that happen with age. As people age, we get those natural lines on our face that deepen, which equals wrinkles. Shadows become bigger, so you're going to see more darker parts of your face, and parts of your face become discolored. No one's face is 100% perfect. There's things like age spots and liver spots and sun spots that all can appear on your face. Freckles, things like that. Lines are good when you're creating an old age. Here is an example of a rendering of an old age and someone applying it. You can see that I've used a bright and a dark color, a yellow and sort of a brown, to create the shadows or wrinkles and the highlights of the folds of the skin. As you see the young lady who is now transformed into an old lady, you can see that we have these same wrinkles and folds and lines. You can see where it's bright in one place or dark in the other in contrast for each other to create an old age. Gore is another style of theatrical makeup. The rule of thumb when you are making gore is to remember the point of impact of the said wound. Because wherever it hits the most, like hardest and first, usually is going to be darker or has more impact as any other part of the wound. Random equals good. Uniform is bad. 
when you're creating like say a bruise or a wound it's never 100 percent perfect because that's what it would be like in real life fresh looks different than aged so like if you take the idea that blood coagulates the longer blood has been sitting the longer it's gonna have congealed and it will be a different color as opposed to fresh blood blood is always last because stage blood doesn't dry so as a person who has done many haunted houses and things where I've had to have stage blood, I have really learned that you don't want to put fake blood on yourself because fake blood is sticky and gross, it doesn't dry, and it also stains. That's how I say you can tell the difference between real blood and fake blood. Real blood doesn't stain where on your hands and things like that, where fake stage blood stains your hand. Next, stipple sponges are your friend. Stipple sponges are this particular type of stage makeup sponge that's a little bit more rough and ragged and can make things look more realistic because they won't be perfect. Here are some examples. These are all fake of bruises, burns, and scars using stage makeup. Again, this is all fake. This is just made with stage makeup. A lot of this is made with liquid latex and paint and stage makeup. When I'm talking about creating for gore, we're talking about a bruise. So one thing you want to do is look at what real bruises look like and how are they different on different skin types because those changes the colors that you may use. One thing um, I always say, you there's a special wheel called a bruise wheel. In a bruise, a bruise is not just brown or black, it is multiple colors. It's red, it's a little purple, it's a little yellow, and it's a little brown. Maybe some places it's a little green too. So you have to think about that when you are applying, when you are applying a stage bruise. Alright, I'm going to quickly show you, this is an example of me applying a very quick bruise that will only take about 30 seconds sped up. But um, you're going to see me use just my hands and a bruise wheel. So I start off with some yellow and I'm making the yellow blend out. You're going to see that I'm going to go in with a different color, maybe a little bit of red, maybe mix some of the colors together. And I'm going to layer it on top of what I have so that it more, has more depth. And I'm going to just keep layering with the darker colors going maybe in towards the brood where, where uh, the point of contact would have been. The lighter colors kind of show where it's the edge of the bruise or where it's starting to heal. But there you go. So that's an example of like how to do a quick bruise. And you can do this with cream or you can do this dry with more powders. Fantasy makeup. Fantasy always, I always suggest you draw out your ideas and have some sort of research images to help guide you when you're designing fantasy. May You're going to probably use some prosthetics and other specialty items to create more of a three-dimensional makeup when you're doing fantasy it's because you know, maybe you're making a creature that has a different nose shape than what your actor has. These kind of things can help you make that character look more real. Use your design elements to really look at makeup when you're designing fantasy. We talked about that on my design elements unit, if you want to go back and watch that, about different types of elements that you can use to create something. All right, here again is some examples of a fantasy makeup and a rendering that I've done. You're going to see that they use lines to kind of create a different eyebrow and like the shape of the cheeks. You can see the different shapes created in the face, like especially in the ears, a little bit more elongated and pointed. Obviously, that is a prosthetic. You're going to you can see a different value of color of that blue going from a lighter blue from a white to a light to a darker blue on the edges. And so this is an example of fantasy that they've worked very hard on. Here's another example of like a fantasy character, maybe like someone made out of wood. 
You can see that we've used lines. You, we've created the idea that this person is textured etc and using color and all the design bunch of design elements to create this sort of fantasy character all right application and design so there's a difference between being a makeup designer and a makeup like applicator or makeup artist so if you want to create the ideas like come up with all the concept, you are a makeup designer. Designers create ideas, they use a script and directorial concept to help come up with what they think hair and makeup should look like for all the characters. Then they draw out renderings and gather all the supplies that people will need. They will sometimes usually show other people how to apply specialty makeup and hair things so that they understand before, way before a production. Now, if you're applying, so you're like a makeup artist or makeup crew, you are taking the design, the drawing, the pictures from your designer and you are physically applying them to the actors. Now, actors usually will apply their own hair and makeup, not always, but usually. Actors have to have their own basic makeup kit that have the things like highlight, shadow, base, create their basic face of makeup. Anything else usually is supplied by the company. Here are some examples of student renderings. They have come up with lots of cool ideas to create different fantasy and realistic characters that hopefully could be applied. Well guys, that has been it for this intro into theatrical stage makeup. I hope that you get a chance to try designing your own makeup and applying it to someone or yourself. Well, you have a great day, Drama Llamas. I'll see you next time.